and welcome to the Sad Dads Club podcast. Here's everybody's favorite sad dads, Jim and Boo. Imagine if you commuted. Because that's something that surprises me, even though I had two hours a day of commute time, I feel like I don't really have extra time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Imagine if you commuted. It would, yes. I, it just, something just seems to absorb f- the free time. I, and I'm not lazy. I'm not, I don't procrastinate. I would never consider I, you to be a lazy uh, person. Right? I would never, I would never use that adjective to describe you. In so any, to, there's some pronouns I would use. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Hung. <laughs> 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 anyway, yeah, Jagawalk. <laughs> uh, <sighs> yeah, it's bizarre. G- yeah, like it just, mm. it, and, and not a, um, you know, uh, what is it? I'm not like a fear of more, like a mortality thing. Like, oh, I've got stuff to get in here before I die, kind of thing. It's, it's just. There's stuff I need more time to get accomplished. To get accomplished, like yeah, you know it, it, these you know these motivational you know speeches and and anecdotes and people selling like oh this you just need to. You know, t- turn on your beast mode, kind of thing. It's like you can't you can't live your life in beast mode every moment of the day. No, but it, it, (laughs) it's not possible. It put, it'll put, you know, spoken from someone with passion and like, and a good, uh, like orator, um, man, it'll, it'll give you goosebumps because it's, and it'll turn on like your inspiration or your imagination. Like, fuck yeah, absolutely. But the bottom line is, the the science is you need rest. So well, the, what, the whole, ha- what the, happens with a motor and you give it full throttle? Right. All the time. Absolutely. It's it no is, different. It is one thing to have drive and purpose, but but you, your body needs rest. Your mental health. Your, absolutely. Yeah. So it's, there are things that look good on paper and sound <laughs> good they? in the moment. Do they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I listen to a whole bunch on my walk, but but fundamentally, where do I stuff that extra? T- I cannot be more condensed and perform the tasks required. There, like that, I'm and get rest. Yeah, and I I think. I think that's the hardest thing. Like, as someone who's just not, like, you, you don't bite into the, you know what, I just need to get up earlier and 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 do that thing. Okay, so you shave off an extra hour and uh, of sleep because that's the only other place to find it. Then you're working in a deficit. Right. Yeah. So, okay. Then you, well, where where else can I make that extra hour? Well, now I'll, maybe I stay up. I kick it off the back end. An extra hour at the, the other whole, end. It's the whole two ends of the same candle. Right, burning, and right? it's like, well, okay, so how effective is that becoming? Like, all you did was scrounge one hour. So to what end are you excelling performance in that one hour are you yeah can you perform better in the existing time that you have perhaps but to the degree that you can now take on something net new i would wager probably not now if you are lazy with your time 
there is probably all kinds of stuff to to scrounge cycles. Absolutely. Uh it like you working from home, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I I am someone, and, and you will know, right? The, you do take a walk with Max, but yeah. that that's because you do need a one. Uh, law says <laughs> <laughs> law mandated lunch. <laughs> yeah, you're you're provided an hour, and uh, you should take your hour of lunch yeah. because it, you're afforded it. Yeah, but th- I am sure there are some times where you, you you may work through lunch and your 10 or 15 minute it's it's almost daily that i do my walk with max which takes between 25 and 35 minutes sure and then i go back to working right so yeah if you're someone that eats takes your lunch break and you sit out at the park bench absent minded because you are disconnecting that's purposeful lunch. If you are someone that's taking your lunch break and I hope these aren't fucking mosquitoes getting me. I <laughs> knew I should have wore pants. If you're someone that's I'm saying the same thing. That's that's literally just staring at your fucking belly button <laughs> because you're not you're not using the time to actually disconnect and and like I'm not I'm gonna say meditate, but like actually get your downtime, a mental health break. You're yeah. just being a staring at your belly button. <laughs> That's probably unused time. Yeah. Like if you're not using it to actually refresh or take a break, well then you're. It's probably. I am the kind of person that will like. I have something running in my lunch break. I am always taking, like, I'm double dipping, triple yeah. dipping in a, a number of places. Yeah. I'm fucking out of time. I'm out of time. There, there have been times where I will try to do something like at lunchtime, <clears throat> like useful. Yeah. Mow the yard real quick. And it, it works, but it's never quite enough time for me so it's like i don't do it very often yeah um there's been fantasies in my mind about like i'll wash the car yeah that's more than a half an hour oh sure you know yeah yeah yeah. um so i don't do that kind of stuff but it's my 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 purpose is lunchtime is for the dog so sure let's get him out of the house he needs to get out of the house right and that just Helps me also mm-hmm. because I enjoy the time with him. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's weird. Like I think back to when I was commuting, and I was an hour in the car up the hill and an hour in the car down the hill after after hours, right? Right. And where did those two hours go? <laughs> Do you know? Like honestly, no. I, I really. I'm like. Do you? I never sleep? felt like I was. You don't, is your alarm the same? Um, no, I do sleep a little later. Okay, yeah. so there's some, but yeah. probably not two hours worth, because you're not. No, right? Yeah, so no. you're. I stay up a little bit on the, you know, maybe midnight, past midnight. Um, I tend to get up about six forty-five ish. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. And it's also not right. The yeah. the, the other side of that is like you candle both ends like it's not healthy to be burning it bright at both ends yeah. so at some point in there you do need to take breaks yeah. but then are you <sighs> yeah and, well yeah. i mean i i feel like i'm i've had this this discussion with my manager before like i just do what i can do as far as work like i don't I'm not saying I don't try to excel at work or whatever. Mm -hmm. I just don't get stressed out. So maybe for me, like the lunch break that I take is enough Mm -hmm. Uh, because I don't, I just do the, I do what I can do. It's like, I, I, there's no sense to me in getting overworked, getting myself worked up about, sure about the workload or whatever's coming. It's Mm -hmm. like, I can just, I can only... I can only do so much. Right. You know. You're aware of your work limitations. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I mean, you know, you you do whatever you can do in the time you've got. Mm. 
So I don't, for me personally, like I remember clearly when I was moving over into the engineering building, the manager, the engineering manager at the time when he interviewed me, uh, was, he asked me, how are you with stress? (laughs) You know? And I'm like, I don't, I mean, I'm, first of all, I'm working in technical support. I don't Mm -hmm. get, I don't get, the only time I ever got really stressed in tech support is if I was in a call, my phone was ringing and the light was flashing and I have how many, how many voicemails? I don't know. Mm -hmm. How far behind am I right now? That would be the, about the only time I would get stressed out. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but like the work itself, I never got worried about the work. It was just like, am I going to be able to get through these mm. next couple of people that left me voicemails to call them back? Sure. Uh, and then what's, how much time is that going to take? I don't know. Mm. And will I have time to get through them all? That was about the only time I got stressed. But like, I was like, I just don't get stressed very often. I just not my nature mm. really. So I don't know. I don't know if it's just like an approach. A mental approach to the work or something? I, I don't know. Hmm. Do you get stressed when you're doing stuff for work? I would assume that you would because <laughs> you got some tight scheduling things, right? So <sighs> I mean you told you told a story think, about the the protein shake. Right. So there are like time like, you know, perform task so yes, there are there are things like that. The further we get into some of the tools that we're having to leverage, though, it's becoming more and more, well, you know, I, I flick, I'm going to simplify it. Generalize. I, I flick the button. Yeah. Uh, you kick off a thing. Right. If the button doesn't, doesn't do what you want it to do, mm-hmm. uh, that's, I, I, I can't help you. Uh, why can't you help me? Well, I flick the button. Well, well, how do you not know? Well, we're no longer the engineers of the button and what's behind the button yeah. and what the button tells I don't control what the button does. All I do is flick the button. In years prior, job functions prior, I designed the button, the color of the button, the wiring of the button, and where the button sat relative to my finger to make it easy to flip, <laughs> right? Yeah. And all of the things, and what would happen if the button didn't work, I knew how to fix what was behind the button. Yeah. Now. That's all obscured. It's a black box. It's a black box. Yeah. I flick the button. The end users have that legacy perception that the person who flips the button has the all-encompassing understanding of what the button does, how to resolve the button issues, right, and the general purpose of the button. <laughs> so there is a in the in the issue like yeah, I have to flip the button by timeline. Mm-hmm. If if I can't perform that, well then there's a, a part of the responsibility certainly is mine. But the we are getting further and further to fielding calls of the button didn't work. I, I'm sorry you have that problem. Uh, if you w- want uh, support on why the button didn't work for you, uh, that's them. Yeah. No, 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 no. You flip the button. Yeah. They pick, provide me the tool and right. I flip the button. Yeah, that's that, it. That's, I, right. And just in case you're confused, the button is not also a man in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's way easier to find. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Welcome to Sad Dad's Gold Podcast, episode 288. I'm the Lord Fu. I'm Jim. Slayer of men in boats. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel that. I had a wonderful surprise this weekend, this last weekend. I'm working on Friday, and I my wife had come home already. And yeah. she was in the kitchen on the phone with Chandler, okay, having a conversation. And he's coming down highway. I think he's working up in Auburn, so he's coming down eighty. And I hear he's. She asked him, 
oh, where are you? And he's like, oh, I'm on 80 right next to Bass Pro Shop. Okay. And I'm like, oh, mentally, I just overhear it. Okay. And then all of a sudden, my wife's like, I got to go. I got to go. And she's like, he, and he's like, okay, you know, whatever, kind of a, uh-huh. that kind of thing. Uh-huh. So she hangs up. And then 45 seconds later, I hear the garage door opening, except Shan's just in the garage, in the kitchen. And I'm like, what's happening? Like, mm, in my brain, I'm like, how in the world did Chandler get from I 80 at Brat Bass Pro Shops in Rockland? to our house in 45 seconds. Sure. And then Millie pops in the house. <laughs> so she just, she had Friday off from the- from Oh, the, drove home. Yeah. She had Friday off from the, uh, the clinic and uh, decided she went to like a, um, what, what do you call those? A uh, estate sale? Oh, okay. She went to an estate sale and then was like telling Shanna, oh, I, I think I'm going to drive home. And we're like, oh, well, I didn't know. Mm. But, she, you know, first of all, just hearing that she said that, I was like, what? Mm. But so Shanna's like, okay, do it, you know, kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. And she did. She just drove home, which is, this is the girl that like doesn't drive the freeway. So it's exciting to see that growth in Automobile experience and natings. Yeah, because I was telling Shanna. She is driving the freeway, right? Or is oh, she yeah. driving back roads or some shit? Oh, no. She's, four and a half she's 80, 37 to 80. Um, and then up into SAC. But, <clears throat> you know, I was, t- Shanna and I were having this conversation. I said, it's, it's really weird to me because, like, I got my license on my 16th birthday. You know what I mean? Yes. And then I drove everybody everywhere. Yes. There were times same, where same. we loaded the car and went to Santa Clara to go to whatever that fucking... Spike and Mike's. No, the... Uh, Great America. Great America. Yes. Is that, that's gone, isn't it? It's close to being gone. Okay. Yeah. But, like, I drove all that shit. You know, like, San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Tahoe. Yes. Chico. Yes. Uh, for... You know, punk rock shows and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I went everywhere, man, uh, all the time. Like, I was always driving all my friends everywhere. And it's so bizarre for me to see, like, my daughter just be deathly afraid of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, she did have the accident. We're not sure. Gonna, we're not going to discount that. That is a factor for sure. But not to have that want drive well yeah you is be that does strong she get that per, is shan in any way like that too because you've driven to vacaville driven both the girls because i was under the impression that neither of them wanted to make that drive to vacaville for a squish fest or something where you put well i stuff. go just because i'm oh okay. i'm around Okay. Uh, and, um, you know, spend time with them or whatever. Sure. I'm not going to be like, oh, you want to go to Vacaville? You know, F you. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll have I'll fun. That is jerking it's, off. I'm not doing anything special, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's, yeah. I mean, Shanna has, and she will again. Uh, in fact, uh, I think Millie's got two and a half ish weeks left on her internship in oh. San Rafael. Yeah. Which means that she'll be coming i think she comes home and then shan has already booked a flight home from portland mm. so she's gonna drive up with melanie fly up home. to portland and help her settle into her new airbnb yeah and then fly home you know so shanna's done i mean her and her friend monica drove to la several times to oh, okay. do stuff and all right shanna is not she doesn't like it she doesn't like for you and I mm-hmm. getting in the car and getting on the highway, it's fun. Like it's, yeah. a, it's, it's the possibilities for sure. or something like that. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's exciting. Yeah. Uh, for her, it's like, there is excitement there, but damn it, I got to drive, you know, mm-hmm. I'll just do it. It's a chore. It's maybe a little bit, you know? So for Shanna, it's not, it's not as enjoyable as it is for say you and I. Mm-hmm. But for Melanie, it's like sheer terror. Like when I drove home with her when the head gasket failed. Sure. Um, oh, yeah, right. I really was hoping that she would 
drive quite a bit of that drive, mm-hmm. and I drove the whole way. But you also had like inclement weather the entire time. So. It rained, yeah, most of the drive. Yeah, and I get that. But also, if you don't do it, you got how are you going to get the experience? Right. I yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I, I'm not. I'm not going to throw you under the bus. Sure. But also, like, come at some, on. At some point. Yeah, come it on. It may have been raining yeah. while you're in your internship, and if you wanted to come home, there, you know. Yeah. It's going to have to happen at some point. And then my wife was really worried because, the not this weekend, but the weekend before she was here, um, she didn't get out of here early enough to make it before it got dark. Oh. And also she had rain on the way here that time too. Mm. And so Shanna was really worried about her driving. I'm like, I'm not worried about her. She's a good mm. driver, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but we were checking her location just to see, you know, where. Oh yeah. 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 The funny one was when she left the house, I told her, go down 99, go like you're going to the airport, get on five mm-hmm. and just go through Woodland. Cause the, YOLO bypasses garbage right now. It's all under construction. Oh, okay. And so there, if there's an accident, it's just you're sitting there for a while. Mm-hmm. And because the, the lanes are all shifted and narrow, uh, it's, it's fucked up. Mm. And, uh, and I told her, go down 99, take 5, go to Woodland, and then take 113 back down to 5. You'll just cut all of that out. Mm. It might be a little bit longer distance-wise. But you're not going to sit in any The movement bypass. will be better. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm all about keeping moving. If sure. I can take an extra few miles and keep moving, then I'm better with that. Sure. So <laughs> I'm curious to know, how, which, how is she going to go? Is she just going to follow what Apple Maps or Google Maps or whatever she's using? Mm-hmm. Wise? I don't know. Mm. Is she just going to follow that? I don't know. Right? Hmm. And I, I even told her. It doesn't matter what your map say. It'll recalculate, and, and it knows. Right. It'll tell you where to go. I see what you're doing here, fucker. Yeah. Okay. Woodland it is. So I'm watching her as she leaves. She goes out Riego to 99. Yeah. She's buzzing down 99. I'm like, okay. And then she passes the five turn off mm-hmm. to the airport. And I go, okay. So she's just... Listen. <laughs> she's Daddy's just... talking here. <laughs> yeah. She's just, uh, you know... Gonna go the regular 80 route, Mm -hmm. you know, 5 to 80. And then next thing I know, she has passed 80. And now she's going into downtown Sacramento on 5. Okay. And I'm like, um... Someone stole your phone. And now Shannon and I are talking. She's also checking her location. And I'm like, well, here's the the big question is is if she hangs a ride on the 50-80 thing there. Mm Mm-hmm. Or not. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And luckily she did. Because if you don't know Sacramento, 80 cuts across town, 5 goes down into downtown, and then there's a there's a Highway 50, mm-hmm. and you can hang a right on that mm-hmm. as you're coming down, and mm-hmm. that will meet up with 80 that you should have been on before. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So she did it, and then she ended up sitting in traffic, of course. Because it was yellow fucking bypass mm. and uh so I, I was asking her i'm like what happened <laughs> you ended up downtown what'd she say she was like i know i i just decided i was gonna follow the lady you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it apparently routed her that way and i'm like uh, that's bizarro what was i was just oh it was okay so it's same vein new thing so uh Nick, through his fraternity, they had a like scheduled v- Vegas mm-hmm. field trip thing where they had to bring a partner. Don't do it wherever it is. Where they had to bring a partner to Vegas for the weekend, and like one person does pays for this, and the other person pays for this. Um, so I was taking Piper to the airport as we're pulling up to Terminal B Southwest, pulling up to Terminal B. Uh, you know, within like a minute, 30 seconds of the the terminal, she's like, is it bad that I'm nervous? I'm like, nervous <laughs> about what? She's like, well, like getting on a, getting on the plane and doing the checkout stuff. Like, is was, she, now is she flying the flight on her own? Yes. 
Oh, okay. That could be right. Sure. And I went, well, it's your your first, and she's like, yeah. I'm like, you're fine. You'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Just prep everything. Your shoes or whatever. You're you're wearing comfy clothes. She didn't. She only had like the the one backpack. So it was, it's a one stop flight. Right. It's <laughs> you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah. It it'll. You're more than capable. You'll be you'll be fine. And it's okay to be fucking nervous. Yeah. Like most of this stuff is turnkey. You know, it'll be okay. Yeah. I was on my way back from the airport. I didn't have maps or anything turned on. And I was just kind of, I was zoned out. So I'm coming out of the airport, whatever freeway that is. That's to, five. To Woodland. And I'm just kind of, mm, and I missed... The 99? Yeah, the 90. <laughs> like, as, as like the on-ramp... Passes by. <laughs> is, is you know, an off-ramp. Because uh, there's construction, so you got the white wall. Yeah. The, like, drop-in bricks. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, as I'm passing that off-ramp, I go, man, that looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> like, I should probably be on that. Yeah. And, I, and then I'm like, wait, <laughs> I should be on that. Yeah. <laughs> And I just, I just went past. I can't remember how I got it. Uh, I think I just. Oh, it, so it put me on whatever. So ninety nine, and I just ended up getting off at Arena. Yeah. Like, you know, doing a drag, dog dragging mics and and just looping back around and getting on it. Yeah. But it was, you know, there was. <laughs> so I could see potentially, even though your daughter fessed up to it. Uh, you know, sometimes. I was I was just enjoying Zoning. the drive, so I was just like, and I went, oh, I I, I don't sh- I should be there. That looks from yep, uh, eh. <laughs> but it's okay. No, I'll, it's it'll figure it out. But you know? what I my point is is that I don't think that she just enjoys the drive. No, I, yeah, right. In her case, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> she's like terrifying the drive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even if she had wanted to hit woodland. It's possible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes I think like I say these things and she's just like, I don't know what the fuck you just said. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like All I heard was <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Siri will get me there. Yeah. Don't do it, ladies. Because uh, I'm, tr- I'm just trying to be helpful because like, first of sure. all, I used to commute to Davis. Yeah. So I, I understand all the routes. I understand the bypass is always a fucking mess. Right. And <clears throat> there were times when I was commuting that I would take uh, five to one thirteen, and go through Woodland because, um, you were hearing on the radio mm-hmm. that oh yeah traffic was bad on sure. the bypass, and you're just like I'm not going that way. Yeah, you know. So I I understand all the available routes. Oh yeah, and I'm just trying to be helpful, Dad. Yeah, and whether you're not or you want to take the advice, that's up to you. Yeah, we were. Uh, mm-hmm. I had taken Piper. It was late last week on like a ride on the motorcycle just to zip around she like wanted to get out of the house break I'm like, oh go on the go on the motorcycle we had just gotten to the stop sign here like on our way out and we got to the light here at pleasant grove just up the way mm-hmm. and and i went the thing that you you learn about when you're on a motorcycle is obviously like the the pressure sensors or like the you know the the sensors for lights that trigger I'm like you end up you, you, you drive on the the car tire track typically. sure you can like you know however stay it's out of the to, grease yeah, yeah. St- make the sensor sometimes it just doesn't flat out register that there's a vehicle there mm. so you i said what you find is that you will plan or redo your route so that way you can get there in right turns or you plan your intersections and your traversals through an intersection through a heavy traffic area that you can you'll have a car behind you or something that will actually t- toggle the need for a left-hand turn kind of thing. Yeah. And it had it had dawned to me that you know, I said and the good news is uh because of an ingress, I'm like I I could I could plan my way around anything probably within a 50 mile I'm going to say comfortably 50 because anything more would point out how much there was driving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, 
thousands of miles of driving. But that was just around town. A local radius. (laughs) Thousands. A local radius that makes me very comfortable without any maps, like having to re-navigate. And then you put that through the uh, lens of a motorcycle that needs assistance with left-hand turns. Like, how do I reroute around to this place? Because... You know, you don't want to. You don't want to have to run a red, even if it's safe. You know, yeah. but there. It, you know, it was another one of those like I didn't realize how much ingress had helped me map routes. Yeah, and driving comfortability through the repetitiveness of bebopping around town. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> uh, we when we did when we did a Subaru trips to. The shop, mm-hmm. uh, which is down by Arden Fairmall. A uh, couple times we picked it up, and it was like right at rush hour time. We're picking it up like close to five o'clock. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> Shanna's driving my car, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll be driving the Subaru, and I'm like, she's like, I'll just follow you. And I'm thinking, she doesn't want to drive in traffic. I know this woman. Right. You know? And uh, so we'll take Roseville Road up. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Uh, which is a fine drive, I guess. But what's weird about that road is if you don't <clears throat> drive it often enough, there's a bunch of turns that you got to make to stay on it. And if you're not paying attention, you'll just <laughs> yeah, you'll just pass them right up. You end up in Fair Oaks, yeah, or, or an armpit, or yeah, or Citrus Heights or something, right? And uh, <clears throat> and I. I'm trying to remember there was one where she was like, oh, there's a, I think we were talking on the phone. She's like, you're going to need to be in the left. I'm like, fuck, I, when was the last time I even drove this route? You know what I mean? Right. And then after doing it once or twice, it was like, oh, I got it now, you know? Right. Um, But man, that first, that first time we did it was like, oh, that's right. That's a, there's a left turn I need to make right here. You know, mm-hmm. I totally forgot about it. Like when we get to... I want to say about Sierra College and Douglas. I I'll I'll defer most route stuff to Venus. She mm. she knows a lot oh, yeah. a lot more of that behind the like off off route Douglas stuff. Yeah, from before a lot of that stuff became those properties became my houses. Yeah, like before they were developed, like Barton Road yeah, and a bunch of shit like that. Yeah, they're just BFE roads yeah. that now have huge seven figure houses and and whatnot. Yeah. But w- once we get past that, yeah, pretty much Douglas. She's like, it would just go this way because she would usually, you know, her dad Folsom. Obviously, most everything ends up on Auburn Folsom at some point anyway. Right. But there are some like nooks and cranny ones where she knows back of her hand. And I'm yeah. just like, well, if we're going to your dad's, just take us the fastest way. And sometimes I'm like, I don't know where the fuck I am right now. <laughs> She's like, oh, it's, it's Orange Vale. Like, where? Yeah. You take Oak Street. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Out, the, yeah. out past Casa anyway. and stuff. But like around here, well, and it's the same thing yeah. for Grass Valley, Nevada City. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, Alta Sierra. Where do you want to go? Mm-hmm. No, no, no. We'll go this way because that it's actually fast. It's what the locals use. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in the Fair Oaks area, so I know. There's. I'm a little rusty though. Really? Yeah. Uh, we went to uh, Sunshine. The butthole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sunrise. S- Sunshine. Uh... It's like the health food place in Old Fair Oaks. Okay. Right by uh, Chicken Park. Okay. And uh, I don't know, we were going somewhere else and we're like leaving. And my brother had a house off of Sunset, but for some reason in my mind mentally, it was on Winding Way. Oh. And they sort of parallel each other. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, they were off... They were off sunset, not, you know, so mm-hmm. like, I just, I'm not spending, I don't spend enough time in that area, even though like in high school, I was buzzing around all those streets all the time. Yeah. Going to skate ramps or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so I get in that area now a little bit rusty. Plus there's a lot of new neighborhoods and new stuff around mm-hmm. that I'm not 
you know. And there was like some stuff from when I was younger, like Sunrise Mall. I, I know that there was a lot of stuff that was all already around it, but there were Sunrise Mall stuck out. Uh-huh. So it was like you could be coming down the road and you'd be like, yeah, oh, and, the and, and then boop, boop. Yeah. It's like, ah, so the now it's so um, built up. Yeah. That it's like, wait, where? Where's the mall relative to? Because <laughs> these buildings are all too tall, and the mall used to be like a you know sore thumb kind of thing. Yeah, and so the everything is everything is big. Yeah. So how do you find uh, a lot of the orientation is off for me when I get down to there? Well, yeah, because there's like that Lowe's and stuff on Greenback, and all that big stuff that's there now that didn't used to be there was like. Birdcage Walk or whatever. Yeah. Like Best Buy and all that shit. All that stuff's in there now. Yeah. The, Back uh, in the day, it wasn't what, there. What else is like that? The Folsom Outlets. Oh, yeah. Like, you go Bunch from... Bunch of stuff built you up. You go right from, there. you know, the train track, that, f- like, frontage road along the light rail used to have nothing. Folsom Boulevard. Yeah, yeah. And now it's... There's stuff all the way, all the way almost directly to the, the outlets. Yeah. And Venus was saying... Uh, there used to be because I think there's a river or a creek and park on the the one right hand side of Folsom Boulevard, leading almost all the way up to That's the Natomas. Is it? It's the backside of Natomas Lake with the river, okay. American River in it. So, yeah. y- you know, there was a a spot, a length in there alongside the light rail where it was this huge green canopy. Mm-hmm. She's like, they've trimmed it or culled it back and, yeah. and now it's it's like yeah. it's open it's like a like a street yeah and, I, and she's like it looks uh, yeah i've seen that it's it's you know it's Folsom like, though we're all old people like <laughs> yo there you know in my day it used to be uh yo the potholes and trees used to cut the weeds came right up to the road and now there's street lamps yeah you know uh, a buddy of mine where i was just telling you earlier about my friend angel and we were talking about shows that we'd been to. And I was like <laughs> complaining because Helmet's coming to town and they're playing in, on Vernon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm like, I want to go see him play. And I haven't bought a ticket yet. But I was mad because I went to buy a ticket and the tickets are 35 bucks. But it, you're buying it from the venue's website and they add service fees and like a location fee on top of the ticket price. Isn't that what the fucking ticket is for? Wait. So a $35 ticket, and then they're adding $12 in fees on top of it, which is like a third of the ticket price. You know what I mean? And I was, I got mad. I instantly got mad. I'm like, fuck it. I'm not going to buy a ticket then. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm like, well, I mean, if I want to see him, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll just pay. If you show up on site and buy a ticket, I is guess still you can't. a service fee? Oh, fucking. Yeah. That's what Angel was telling me, that you can't buy tickets direct from the box office. And it's not a Ticketmaster thing? No, it's Goldfields, Roseville, which is like what the... I mean, they're not selling their tickets through... No, it's ticket. through Goldfields' so website. They're, their own... They're selling their own tickets. Yeah. There's not even a middleman. No. And has a service. Well, I mean, I assume they have a of, ticketing of $12. service. Of I, I my 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 assumption is they have a ticketing service that sort of runs the back end. Okay. That they probably pay into, but it all looks like their website. So you're going to their website and paying their website okay. fee ticket price mm-hmm. plus a dish two other like a service fee and a and a and a fee for the location. Well like a a venue fee or something like that. I'm like, wh- what? And then I got mad. And I even sent a screenshot to Chandler, like, what the fuck? Because I was going to buy two tickets. That's and a- I'm like, I'm not spending $90 on two tickets to see Helmet. <laughs> you know, I've seen them like four times, That's- you know, but I know I'm going to just bite the bullet and buy a You'll ticket. you buy a ticket anyway. Yeah. And so I don't even, I don't forgot why I even brought that up. Anyway. Service I was, fees. Yeah, I got pissed about that. Location. Yeah. Uh, what, did I, what were we talking about? <laughs> uh, di- uh, uh, Things change it. We're old, oh, old oh. man checking in. And uh, so I was class. like, I remember the days right, when I went and saw Fugazi a couple of times, and the tickets were $5, and they were all ages show. They, 
they forced all the venues, and they, this is part of the reason why they had a hard time finding venues to play at sometimes, yeah. is because they forced the menu, the venue to provide $5 tickets, so there were no service fees. They were 5 bucks, <laughs> and then they were always all-ages show. They wanted kids to be able to come to the show, and if you were at the show and they were playing and people started getting rowdy, they would literally stop the show mid-show and tell people to knock it the fuck off. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then they would wait until they got settled down and they would start playing again. They don't want anyone getting hurt. Yeah. Tickets are five bucks. That's not about the money. Handle your shit. Yeah. Listen to the music. Yeah. We have Piper on our way out to the, to the airport. She said that some of her friends at, at Sierra were talking about, you know, how some of them, you know, uh, a lot, some of the group has dispersed, but the, the ones of them that have stayed around have like seen West Park's expansion. And whatnot. Oh yeah. She's like, so we're under 20 and already those of us who haven't like left the nest kind of thing are, are already seeing these, alterations to roads and she's like the the conversation turned to we're like already saying remember when that road oh, didn't yeah. do that thing as we're going out baseline and the you know the housings that have started pushing way out into uh, into middle third of baseline now i said kind of like how these these you know, this used to be nothing, all but nothing. Yeah. I said, now you, you're seeing this push out. And we got to you know, about halfway, and I said, eventually, this rickety ass fence ain't going to be here. And you'll think, remember that conversation <laughs> I had with dad? And this fence is no longer here because it's a fucking sidewalk. You know, that's. Yeah. I know. She's already old, old manning, and she's not even drinking age eligible <laughs> that's hilarious right <laughs> her and her friends who haven't left are like we suck we don't left we're gonna see like what happens <laughs> I'm like so you ain't seen shit oh yeah well, i could go on for days i mean we've lived in our house 28 <laughs> years there was nothing around us you used to get from dry <laughs> creek to bell road and there was nothing there now you have a target and a panda express sit the fuck down oh yeah <laughs> yeah, the Galleria didn't exist. Yeah, uh, Pleasant Grove didn't go to sixty-five. Right, and they're doing the expansion of three lanes on either th either side of Pleasant I know. Grove. Like, yeah, well, it was planned. Sure, you 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 see the the center divide is huge. Yes, they had planned for it like a while ago. Right, but still, I see on next door people complaining about the trees getting cut down. I'm like, motherfuckers. The city planted those fucking trees. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so they can cut yeah. them down if they want to. They're not to. the heritage oaks. I guarantee yeah. you if it was the heritage oaks that they were going around, it would be a bigger problem. Yeah. And they would probably still be there. I don't think they can cut the oaks down. Yeah. I mean, Junction was the only way to get to this side of town back in the day. But even before that, did you know, <laughs> before that, off of Vernon Street, okay, okay. if you're on Kirby, Yes. And you turn north on Vernon Street, so you're going towards downtown Roseville. Yes. And you kind of go down, and there's sort of a little bridge over a creek. There's yes. There's houses there. Yes. There's like sort of some industrial th on the left. And you kind of go down, and there's a bridge. Well, just beyond that bridge on the left is a road. Sometimes you're in the area. Stop and look. There was a road that cut through there that went under the railroad tracks, and that was how you got... To the other side of town. Oh, to really? this side of town. Huh. From the other side of town. That road. It was like going through a little tunnel underneath the railroad tracks. And they... It's sort of still there, but it's blocked off. Oh, you is You can't it? drive on it anymore. Oh. But uh, Shanna's brother had a girlfriend that lived, like, over off of uh, Vineyard, mm -hmm. like, way out there, which mm -hmm. back in the day was way the fuck out there. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's just there. Mm. But he, she lived out there. And that's how you got to her house. You go down Kirby, hang a right, go left, go under the railroad, <laughs> hmm. under the rail yard and pop out the other side. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out sometime. It's fascinating. And now there's the big, 
the big overpass, which is oh, sure. yeah, yeah. Foothills overpass. Yeah. But back then, that didn't exist. That's relatively new. Hmm. <laughs> so bizarre. So that's how, when I <clears throat> met Shanna and her family and her brother was in high school. So that was around, that was the late 80s when that was still happening. Hmm. So we've seen a lot. There she, Piper had asked, she's like, how do they, how does Riego and Baseline, like, how does that happen? I said, city planning. Yeah. Like, you just have to think at some point, Baseline, and the, at the early iteration of Roseville, Baseline was a road that went somewhere and stopped before all of the farm fields started. And Riego, off that, what was an early iteration of 99, went from only there to into the farmland. And there was, there was no connectivity there. And then eventually... Yeah, I it, assume. It, it made sense to connect the two. Yeah. So you have a Riego that... I, I would be Probably curious. on the edge of on the edge of the backside of Roseville was probably where that sure. brokenness happened. And it probably stopped maybe where the train tracks were. I don't know. I'd be curious. I'm never going to have fucking time. But I would be interested to know... <laughs> right back to the... <laughs> yeah, right back to time. <laughs> I'd be interested to know yeah. from a historical standpoint yeah. where Baseline used to end and where Riego used to end. And then at what point <clears throat> did they just make sense to connect the two as a means of... That's a great question. Um, as far as I've ever known, they've always gone through, but that doesn't mean that I have been driving that long enough. Because back in the day, you just didn't go that far out. Right. You know? Yeah. All that infrastructure on the Roseville side, like foothills and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. that didn't exist back in the day. So how you would even get out there would be right. I'm from sure, the like it just you know in yeah. the ye old days of you know <laughs> steaming and wagonings yeah. it was it probably just made more sense as a thoroughfare you went through Sacramento like yeah. you go down to go up why would you know those are all farms those are Wayne's John's ricinatings you know you you don't well, that's how all the stuff in Roseville got its name, is based on whatever farm property it was. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that totally makes tons of sense. But I love that stuff. Yeah. I love looking it up like, what was this before? You know? Mm -hmm. What was that? I, oh, that's really cool. I don't know why. It's fascinating. Mm. Fascinating. Yeah. Like, some of these things just didn't... Like, it, you know, like it's... The, our local shit was not planned out as as and designed like Washington D.C. Right, like that's soup to nuts. Like this is planned. It's yeah. intended to look like this and be this way. You get out to some of these small cities outside the you know the origination of like the railroad city part, and it was ah well, you know how do I get from here to, to Orangevale and the road wines or it's like auburn it's some fucking cockeyed you know diagonal thing that make, and then you got a huh, right and it's got an elbow to it or dog leg and you're like what happened here yeah there was a probably a barn there or some shit yeah well, you gotta go around Derek's barn because <laughs> that's where his horse died and he refuses to bury it because he's a dick <laughs> Yeah. You lost all his money in the gold rush. Like, when I think about that kind of stuff, the gold rush, for instance, like, how rugged some of that stuff is up there, like Coloma, <clears throat> Grass Valley area, that all that gold mm -hmm. rush stuff where all the mines are. Yeah. The fact that they were even able to get around and and get places without dying, you know, and that, you know... For what I did <clears throat> as a commute that took me an hour every day, <laughs> each way. Right, you talk about that was time like loss. Probably a couple of days wagon ride for somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah. Back way back then. Yeah. You were fucking feeding a horse and having a horse tow you up the hill, and that probably took a couple we of days. We broke a spur on the wheel. We're down for a day and a half. You're like, and we yeah. had to go find an oak limb. <laughs> Yeah, because we're in the middle of nowhere. Right, to whittle it into a spur. You know, like, yeah, you, there's nothing paved. 
Yeah. It's on a fucking wagon trail, literally. Yeah, you got back problems. Just, <laughs> we... That bouncy seat was pretty good. <laughs> I'm going to kill a bitch. <laughs> spit on it. <laughs> now spit on me. What? Just kidding. I mean, it's it's kind of bonkers to think about how, like, and then we'll, like, hit some traffic and complain. Right. Right? Like, God damn it, it took me eight more minutes. Walker window, I need to turn the air conditioning on. <laughs> Fuck, it's warm. <laughs> and here we got dudes like their families on a wagon moving up to gold country yeah. to strike it rich. Yeah. Dodging snakes and bears. Yeah, literally. I mean, that's... It's kind of bonkers. With and then, no like, deodorant. was Highway 49, like, the wagon trail? Yes. You th- is that what it was? Yeah. That's, like, bizarro. Yeah. And I remember the first, the, f- the first time I drove up there for my interview for work, mm-hmm. and I was like, I had driven up there before, but this was the first time I drove up there for work, and I'm, like, driving up the hill. And I'm like, I kind of know, like, I kind of remember. And then at some point I'm like, I've been driving a while. Did I miss it? Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I started to worry that I'm, I'm like, no, I just got to keep going. I haven't missed it, mm-hmm. you know? So I can't imagine <laughs> what that was like in a wagon. Yeah. And I even then, like the t- couple times, you know, I've, we've, well, I've, gone to like Dave and Nats. Uh-huh. Like a number of those like offshoots like directly off like Indian Springs. Yeah. were gravel right off the road. And oh, now really? now it's like pavement, 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 pavement driveway. Yeah. paved road, paved road, you know. Some of those it was just like yeah, you have to slow way because dust. It, oh you yeah, know, and it, it, it. Well, you can't expect the Prius to go down the gravel. Right. It, you gotta have it's p- no min, min max there. Yeah. It's, Plus the uh, pickup trucks. You know they're not actually meant to be on the dirt. You know, no, they're scared. It's how? It, what happens when the twenties <laughs> get dirty? <laughs> what, yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, imagine how much time it takes to scrub a twenty. Yeah. Or does, 22. Does four high, is that just like a high five with four fingers? Like, what does that mean? <laughs> How did, it, and where does the hand come out of the truck when I press that button? <laughs> like, I don't understand. Yeah. I've never seen a hand. Yeah. It's weird. Where was it? Speaking of Prius, where were we <laughs> at? We were, oh, Venus and I went to Starbucks. Right over here. In your wagon? In the wagon. Mm-hmm. And... A gentleman, she, Venus, uh, the mobile order stuff was down, so we did the... God damn it. I know, the plebeian, we had to go inside and... and the horror, the, god and, damn and do it. The thing. She's like, uh, so we, uh, well, I'll walk over there. So we walk over there, and we're, she, we're doing it, the doodad, and... She, Everyone's a hipster now. I know. Uh, what's, the, what's the least amount of communication I can do with a person? I just want all of the app. <laughs> so I'm I'm sitting down, and Venus is over at the counter waiting for the thing, and a gentleman walks in, like business suit. I figured uh, like a Uber Eats, or you know, or whoever the food delivery guys. They wear suits now. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he just look. He just struck me as like. I mean, he there's <laughs> there's an Uber Eats like, guy that he, means business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the only reason I was doing that was because Piper had, she was, uh, when she was in Vegas, she had a, a guy picked her up in a, a Polestar. Her Uber oh. driver was in a Polestar. Nice. I just figured at that time of day, the guy, he didn't look <laughs> like he was, he was just like, he went straight to the mobile thing. I just figured he was a, a delivery person. <laughs> But he was <laughs> when I'm not brokering deals in my suit. Yeah, I drive for I'm Uber driving Eats. Starbies around. <laughs> Fucking yeah, you look anyway, and it can't be for me. <laughs> I can't just need a cup of coffee. Well, what if you order Uber Eats and then just go pick it up yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, whatever. I'm here to get my order. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. So. 
He goes straight to the mobile thing and he picks up his thing. And, you know, I'm just eyeing that he's in a suit. So it's like, oh, that looks like a, <laughs> That's fascinating. That looks like a nice suit. Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> I'm in track pants and a t shirt. <laughs> and I'm at work. <laughs> and I'm at work. <laughs> so he, he walks out and Venus, like 30 seconds behind him, Venus walks back with our stuff and we walk out too. And. We're walking through the parking lot, and I see a brand new uh, BMW sport bike. The guy oh. parked it right in front of what was the Golden One ATM. Yeah. It, he's got... Uh, I'm staring at one. The bike is nice. It's an expensive bike, and it's the 1000 RR. So it is top, top, uh, top, top, top. Oh, top. Yeah. The man has spent many pennies on his bike, but he's standing at the ATM... In full gear. Whenever I see someone wearing full gear, they get like an instant, like, fucking good job. Yeah. Like, attaboy for you. But, he, you know, he's got his helmet on. He's standing at the ATM, and he, and I'm fucking eyeballing the bike, and it's awesome. And I'm thinking, well, I'm going to take a picture and send it to Mike. Like, fucking BMW out in the wild. And right. make some sort of pretentious BMW yuppie joke. Uh, but I didn't get my phone out because coffee's in my hand. And a Prius... That looks like it has been rode hard and put away wet. <laughs> it's got it, which is a compliment, right? And it's doing a sideways loop, but around the the BMW who is parked in like a slot sideways. So the the Prius is like going between the bike and the curb to like do a a U turn, and I'm staring at the bike. Staring at the guy in the helmet. Oh, no. And the Prius, like, like in, because, you know, it comes in view by proxy of its location to the bike in which I am staring at. Yeah. And does, like, this slow-ass turn. Venus is looking at the Prius like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Yeah. Getting that close to the bike. Just go down the the parking and turn. There was no reason to loop around the bike. Right. None. So I think she's looking at the Prius being a dipshit, and I'm looking in the direction of the bike and the biker. The Waiting way- for a reaction. Right. And then the Prius makes the slow turn around, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, oh, man, that thing is fucked up. It's got, like, zip ties on, like, the fender. It had an Autobot symbol slapped on the hood. And I'm like, oh, fucking Transformers. <laughs> but what the fuck is this thing doing here? And it makes the turn, and now it's eclipsing the bike, and it's in front of me, and it's the dude in the suit. (laughs) And I can only presume that he thinks I'm staring at the piece of shit Prius, but really my focus is on the bike. (laughs) Which is behind him, yeah. Which is behind him. And he rolls down the window, and he goes, Hey, bro, it's not my car, man. (laughs) (laughs) And then... (laughs) Proceeds to slow roll the beater of a Prius like away out towards Mahaney. And I look at Venus like, what? What? <laughs> what happened? What was that about? Is it your suit? Yeah. <laughs> and the, the only thing, and I'm, we're breaking down like, what the? F-? Venus is teed off because she's like, what the fuck was that guy doing? <laughs> and, and now I'm like, I wasn't. <laughs> I'm worried that I'm being judged, that I'm judging the guy's car when it was just my fo- I'm like... And him doing dumb shit. Yeah, I have... Yeah. I don't give a f- about your car. <laughs> or that you're in I mean, it. the only redeeming quality right. was the Autobot sticker. <laughs> right, absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, but this guy, in the momentary uh, glance that he and I he caught each caught other... in the staring him hard, And, man. like, looking at him in the suit... He had to have recognized that man is respectable because he's in a suit. Is is must have been the eye glance that I gave him, and then me catching him in this beat shit Prius. The, he, the he, clothes in the Prius the don't match. Did not match, and he had to let me know. Hey, bro, oh, he was feeling it. it. Yo, he was upset. <laughs> I am being judged. He saw me in the suit, and now it's not my car, bro. I'm like, what happened here? Is he had a license plate frame that said my other car is something else? Yeah, or it, it, I assure you, it's a BMW as well. 
<laughs> Jeez. And then, then he drove off. <laughs> and the whole time we're just like, what the fuck happened? <clears throat> Later on, yeah. I think it was the next day, Venus and I are at, it was Monday. So the event happened on Sunday. Monday, we're at the gym. And the Prius oh, no. is parked on the parking lot. <laughs> and Prius was like, that's the piece of shit Prius. And I went, what? And it oh, sure shit, gosh. Autobot symbol and everything. And it had the, like, getting close up. It's, it's tore up. It's rough. The, the thing is fucking rough. Was he working out in his I, suit? I don't know. Was he working out in his suit? I didn't see him in the gym <laughs> because it wasn't his car, bro. But it, it could have been the other driver. It straight up one. had like the Frankenstein stitch of zip ties holding the oh fender on, like the you know the cross stitch. What bad decisions led to that? I'm like what? And what meant the whole the whole thing even worse was that it had like the temporary paper plates. Mm. I'm like, no, <laughs> that that's some some brother's uncle's dealership shenanigans stuff going on that car is not being sold or the paper plate stolen yeah they, come on yeah bro <laughs> i was uh really hoping to hear i mean not really hoping but expecting to hear i guess that he swiped the side of the rr oh no and knocked it over yeah something. no <laughs> he went fully around it unnecessarily yeah, yeah. And then it was, you know, on hindsight, we're driving back, and it had occurred. Like, I was absorbing the event as it happened, but I was still yeah. watching the bike and, like, trying to figure out, going through the mental process of, like, how close, how quick can I get my phone out and take a picture of the bike without the rider turning around and being mm. like, why are you taking a picture of my shit? And I would have been like, you spent good money. It's okay. Let me take a picture. <laughs> this is basically a BMW M3 in the wild or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Like high, high end <clears throat> yeah. stuff. Uh, and then it was like, yeah, why, why would you do that? It, it made the whole process of the turnaround yeah. made no sense. Yeah. Like, what the, what are you doing? It's, Maybe that was his way of checking out the bike. Sure. It's not my car, bro. Like, hey, I don't judge. So I want to mention something that Shannon and I noticed for quite a while. Okay. Uh, we we don't go to the other. This there's we have a couple WalMarts in town, right? Okay. And there's a, the there's a newer one. It's only a few years old uh, in Rockland, off of a Sierra College in eighty. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah. yeah. So we go we go there on occasion if we're looking Buy for Bass something. Pro shops. Yes. Yes. Okay. And we, I will, t- I will find the easiest uh, line to park in. Okay. Yes. Right. And I'll typically try and park in the same area every time we go. So yeah, we're par- we go and uh, you know these are like weeks or maybe a co- month or two apart. We'll go, and I started noticing. Like three third slot in from the front mm-hmm. in front of Walmart, this green accord that was had been parked there, <clears throat> and you notice it because it's full of shit. <clears throat> oh, okay. it's just completely stuffed full of stuff, and you know you kind of like, oh damn, and then you realize, oh someone's in it camping, someone's living Hol- in that Hol- homing, yeah. yeah, okay, and then you leave. And maybe a couple of weeks later, you come back, and that same car is parked in the same exact spot, and there's spider webs all over, and the tires are kind of flat. Oh, and you're like, what? What? And then you realize, oh, there's movement in the fu- they're in the car right now. They're mm-hmm. still here. It was like that for months. Okay, months and months. And uh, <clears throat> and I I just would feel bad because you could see the car starting to deteriorate. It almost looked like. Someone had hit a tail light at some, like backed into it or sure. something, and then like one of the tail lights is broken. Like, is it is it broke down? Do they not have any money to leave? Right. Is this the safest place they feel that they can live? Mm-hmm. Um. And then one day it was gone, mm. and I need closure on that. Yeah. I I want to know what happened. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. What happened? Did they have to go to a different Walmart? Did someone complain and they got towed? Hmm. 
You know, did the thing even run? Right. Does Walmart still have the the policy that you can camp in their parking lots? I think it depends on the Walmart. Does it? I think so. Because it would be hard pressed to. I mean, unless it got to a safety concern. Well, it wasn't like, even. How it, do you define <clears throat> camper? Like I can live in my car, like I could live in a camper. So. Well, normally, if you're in a camper situation, you're not parking right in the front. You're like parking in the oh, back. Oh, and they were in the front. They were like third spot in. Oh, from the front of the <laughs> the line. Mm. <laughs> And they were there for months, months and months. Hmm. And then one day we went to that Walmart um, a month or two ago, and I was like, oh, that car is gone. There's hmm. a different car there now. Yeah. Now there's a different car there every 15 minutes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Finally. But I just wanted to know what happened. Like, did someone call and complain? Did she die? Hmm. Did she get some help? Hmm. Does she have a job? Did did it get towed? Did Walmart complain? That car's been there. Like, it had fucking cobwebs growing on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm just curious. I don't know how to find out that information. If anyone has any. Do you ever take knowledge. a picture of, like, the license plate? No. Mm -hmm. No. Hmm. And even if I had the license plate number, I wouldn't know how to do anything with that. Oh, it's a dark web, bro. <laughs> oh. Impressive. Oh, hey. Impressive. Just only do it at Starbucks when you're doing those things. Yeah. Well, in a suit. That's that's funny. That's a funny story. <clears throat> yes. I I mean it was like so oddball. Cause you saw him inside. Was he he was a younger guy, I assume? Uh middle age. <laughs> you saw him inside and you're like, damn, dude's dapper. Yes. Right? That's that is exactly yeah. like Oh, and good, then you get outside and should... you're checking out a motorcycle and he's doing dumb shit in a shit fucking Prius. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he was immediately judged. Not my car, bro. Not my car, bro. <laughs> hey. Hey, you know. That's funny. I take my walks in Balenciaga's too. Like, you know, whatever. Right. Sure. Yeah. Tax write off break, whatever. <laughs> We're at time. All right. What do you have to say about that? I have to say, uh, return the cart. Wash your hands. Wash your ass. Mm, check your oil, Tony. Uh, stay up to date on our shots. Make the call if you need to. Register to vote. Um, pick up a broom. And if you're that fucker that won that jackpot in Oregon, call me. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. Yeah. Hey, man. Actually, you just know him. Just call him. Just hey, man. Can I deliver you? Whenever you win the billion-dollar lottery, everyone calls you. Everyone's looking I'm for sure. money. Do you know if Oregon has the, like, you you have to post that it, who it was? Oh, is it public or private? Right. I don't know. Do you know? Anyway. Anyway. Uh, thanks for listening. Have a good week. Catch you next week. Bye. <laughs>